long after the heat of the moment, I pull off the highway in rural Portugal and glance at the Bugatti Chiron center console. As the engine cools and the carbon silicon carbide brake rotors start to dissipate heat, the onboard computer's telemetry reveals some staggering figures, a peak speed of 377 km per hour, do the math, and that's 234 miles per hour, with the quad turbocharged W16 squeezing a max of 1466 horsepower at 6691 revolutions per minute. The mind-boggling brain shuffle of Bugatti's latest land rocket cannot be understated, even when placed in context against the now-defunct Veyron. In ultimate supersport trim, the Veyron produced a stunning 1,200 metric horsepower. The Chiron's leap to 1,500 ponies required considerable development, testing, and re-engineering. That exhaustive process saw significant challenges, even late in the game. Consider the high-speed testing incident in South Africa. Despite extensive test bench work, real-world driving revealed that the immense exhaust heat was melting the rear bumper and nearly igniting the car. The solution, it turns out, was to add a duct so airflow from the underbody could channel through and diffuse the heat. Hashtag, number 1500 horsepower problem. From the driver's seat, the initial impression is entirely digestible. A press of the blue, steering wheel mounted engine button summons all 16 cylinders and the sound, at least within the cabin, is not as daunting as you might expect. Those on the outside, however, are hit by a deep, hearty bellow from the Chiron 6 exhaust pipes. Compared to the Veyron, this cockpit has been cleaned up and streamlined trading numerous analog gauges on the instrument cluster for one big speedometer needle that sweeps all the way to 300 miles per hour, or 500 kilometers per hour, depending on the country it's built for. Three configurable TFTs offer additional information, including a tachometer, a trip computer, and vehicle settings. Low-speed driving reveals that, well, low-speed driving is all but impossible. That's not because the Chiron isn't tractable or well-behaved, it's actually remarkably controllable and docile at legal speeds. Rather, when you graze the tip of the turbocharger's immense boost, you get an irresistible taste of that aircraft-like power. The torque piles on as the first set of turbos spool, tempting you to keep bearing the pedal as it tugs your head closer to the headrest. The Chiron's interior is an elegantly understated place where the only distraction from the flawless leather is the subtle glint of anodized aluminum, but those finely modulated details fly out the window as the speed accumulates, diverting your attention towards the rapidly approaching road ahead.